All right, guys, so this is what I'm using for bait. A night crawler, also known as an earthworm. Crazy little guys. And uh, it's funny because I generally never fish with worms or bobbers. And I'm doing both today. And so gar have really little teeth, so what we're doing is I got a tiny hook, and I'm gonna hook this, hook this worm a couple of times. And uh, that way, he doesn't just rip it off the hook. We got a little bobber so it stays on top. Let's go try to catch a gar. Let's take, let's take the bobber off since he's right here. Usually I like to leave the bobber on because they're on top, but maybe the bobber's scaring him. Oh, did he go for it or did he get scared? I think he scared him. Oh, he's on it, isn't he? Yep. Oh yeah. He just ate it. Oh yeah, he's eating it. They're gonna let him eat. Cause they got, you'll see, they got really small mouths, so you gotta let them eat it a while. I can see the worm sticking out of his mouth. No way. Yeah. He hasn't eaten it completely yet. I can see the pink sticking out of his mouth. See, if I set the hook now, I wouldn't get him. It's almost all in. Oh, <gasps> you got him. <gasps> Just like that. No. See? See how, you guys see how long I let him eat? He had that worm in his mouth forever. You know what, we're gonna cut this worm in half and see if it makes a difference. Oh, he's right there. You see him? Yeah, I just saw his tail. He... Oh, oh, the oh, gar, the gar, the gar, the gar, the gar. Yeah, gar. yeah he's got it. Careful okay. that piece of metal sticking down, you see it? Yeah. I wish I could show you guys that, but the water is so crappy that it's hard to see. The metal, the metal, Vic, go down there. Careful, careful, careful. Get him, get him, get him. Grab him, go down there. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There's our first gar of the day. Now we can show you how small their mouths are. Oh my gosh, I, I've, I'll tell you what. In all my life in living in Florida, I have never caught one of these. And they are rock hard. I know they're gonna be interesting to clean. That mouth. They're so hard. They're they're like prehistoric. It's like You're it's gonna lose it, Vic. It's like it's got alligator scales, seriously. Look at that mouth. Tiny teeth, real small mouth. They're strong. Real strong. Where's his hook? Did he swallow it? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's hooked in there good. Look at that. Check that shot out. Are you in the sun? It really is like. So this is, I'm not sure if it's a short nose, long nose, Florida gar. I know it's not an alligator gar. Uh, alligator gar are the ones that get really big and those are the ones that are endangered in Florida at least. I don't think you're allowed to keep them. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this guy though. So strong. They don't put up much of a fight in the water, but as far as like brute strength, they just want to snap out of your hands the whole time. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's hard. It's hard to hold. Okay, so I bled out this gar in that little bucket of water for about five minutes, and, and it would make a big difference in the taste. I might just be a salty guy, but freshwater fish just always seem like they're just not gonna be I don't know, they, they feel like they're just gonna be muddier and everything. It could be a just misconception I have, but I bled him out, put him on ice, and that was his last swim. I was literally just sitting on the truck. There's this little canal here and Brick's driving around. And she said, try to spot him from the truck. And that's what we're doing. I never thought it'd be so hard to catch a gar in my life like it is today, but. It's in. Oh, he went for it, didn't he? He turned his head. Try to move it a little. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my oh gosh. that was epic. <laughs> that was so cool, wasn't it? Kinda That's like... 
that's probably what happens in the wild. A lizard or frog or something jumps into the water and, and these gar ambush predators, they just sit there and they just wait for things to fall in. Yeah, he, he's got it. He hit it like a snake head. He did, didn't he? I'm letting him, I'm gonna count to like 15. One, two, three. 15. He's taking it. Is he? Yeah. He's swimming real slowly with it, but he's got it in his mouth. See, look, that's him, that's not me. Oh my gosh, he's all the way over here. Careful. <sighs> no. The hook just pulled. Rick. Oh. Well, that's the problem with fishing these little hooks is you, you hook them easy, but you pull hook easy. It's the size of the hook we're using. That was an aggressive eat, wasn't it? Yeah, that was cool. Gotta love the so smell. So what do we got going on over cane. there, Brooke? Um, <clears throat> well, they set the sugar cane on fire on purpose, and that's what this is, is a controlled sugar cane fire. And that's where all of, I, I think all of the US sugar comes from here, doesn't it? Um, I know, I, th I think Florida's the biggest exporter of sugar, the biggest producer of sugar in the whole country, I'm pretty sure. Maybe we have a it. huge corporation there. It smells so good. Mm. <laughs> so Brooke and I are headed back, and you know what? We've caught one gar, but we had a great day. Just like a nice scenic drive through the Everglades. Put your seatbelt on, safety first. And yeah, so we're trying to get one more gar to have a little family dinner. Don't know if we're gonna get one as the sun's going down. They're getting harder and harder to see, but we'll keep you guys posted. Never have I ever filleted a gar before. And just to show you guys, since you can't physically feel it because you're behind a computer screen or a phone right now, how hard their skin is. Listen to this. That, did, that didn't do it any justice. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, I've went alligator hunting before. It's tougher than alligator skin. It is the toughest fish skin I have ever felt and every video I've seen of filleting these guys requires a pair of scissors to get through this skin but this is what we're gonna do this is a serrated tiger edge knife by Dexter I'm gonna try to get through the top of the head first just with this thing you guys see it's like it's rugged stuff now what most people do when they get to this point is they'll take scissors and run it up from the head down to the tail, but let's just see if we could do it this way. I don't think we can though. It's, it's literally impenetrable. Like, I don't care how sharp your knife is, this stuff is so thick. So what we're gonna do is, got a pair of kitchen scissors and we're gonna cut. Jeez, even these scissors are having a hard time getting down here. So we're going straight down the middle of the fish and cutting through the scales. Never did I think I'd be using scissors to clean a fish. They're like armored. Yeah, it's, I don't know what would want to eat this thing in the wild besides an alligator. I don't think any fish could get through this. I don't think they have any predators besides alligators. Okay, so we're going all the way down to the tail. Now I'm guessing we got to kind of fillet it from the inside out. So we're going to take the skin off first somehow. So just like that, we're gonna remove the skin, or armor as Brooke would say, from the flesh. I'll tell you what, this is not easy. If I caught one of these things and I had never seen that people eat them, I probably wouldn't be inclined to try to do it myself. 
I'm sure Native Americans back in the day, which Florida had a ton of, this was probably a real delicacy and probably an easy meal for them. Okay, so now I got that side. Now let's do the other side. So I just want my knife to be on that inside of that armor plating. The craziest way I've ever filleted a fish. Well, what? From what I can see so far, the meat looks very white. Yeah. It's not smelling anything. It's not really smelly. Let's see if once we got enough of this off, if we can kind of crack it open. Okay, so now, this is what our gar looks like. You guys can hear all that skin separating. Look at that. That is a wild looking fish from the inside out, isn't it? So now what we're going to do is separate the meat from the actual skeleton. So I'm going to find the backbone and just start separating the actual filet off. So it almost looks like their rib cage goes like this and then down towards the tail. See, that's the rib cage. Okay, so there's the filet you get off of it. Very long, and this might look like meat, but that's the rib cage right there. Bone, 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 bone. Now we do the same thing on the other side. And I know one thing I've read about, which you guys might be able to confirm in the comments section, is that certain species of gar, the, I think it's the liver, or something in its organs or intestines has a toxin that is not good for humans. And that's why I'm trying to not get in that area. Okay, there's our second floor. So I'm guessing his intestines, his heart, his liver, kidney, all of that is probably underneath that. It's almost like a normal animal, you know, has its ribs up here. Their ribs are like down. They're, they're flush and they go out like this and they go all the way down there. And I think this is where he stores all of his organs and things. So if you ever wondered on how to flay a gar, <laughs> It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's my first time, and uh, that's how you do it. And, huh? See if there's anything in his belly? Yes, we're gonna put our fillets away first. So here's the fillets, and let's see if there's any... It doesn't smell at all. Smell it. I'm sick, I can't smell. Brick's sick, but it doesn't smell at all. It's not, it's not the firmest thing in the world, but um, not horrible. Okay guys, we're gonna check the belly and look inside his organs. And let me show you. And also here, now you can hear it better. Listen. That is not what fish skin is supposed to sound like. Look at how thick that is. It's crazy stuff. And so, yep, this is where his organs were. Underneath, underneath this really long rib cage that was exposed. Oh, wow. maybe, maybe it was the roe that's poisonous. You guys go ahead, comment below. I don't know which one's toxic, but there's something in their organs that's toxic. I know that. He's got a long, skinny belly. He's got, yep. His belly goes all the way from up here to down here, whereas most fish would end about halfway. His goes way down. That's weird. This looks like roe. You think the fish are going to eat it? The yeah. saltwater fish? Let's see. There's some snapper in the canal today. Buffers are going in. Oh, the catfish got it. Okay, well, you got your belly checked. There was nothing in his belly. Nothing in his belly. What were you expecting to find? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the fish <laughs> I don't know okay guys so check this out it looks like look if I if I hold my hand like that what's the first thing that comes to mind an alligator right yep looks like a little alligator 
an alligator fish. If I look, if I hold them like this, it kind of looks like a little baby gator, doesn't it? Yeah, with little legs. Kind of funny. So sorry, Mr. Gar, but you are going for your last swim. Oh, one more thing. Comment below if you guys or you know someone, if there's anything you can do with this skin. Because I'm pretty sure I've seen videos where people uh, store the skin and they make something out of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if you could make some type of leather product out of it because it looks like it. So see you later, dude. He like torpedoed down. If you guys are ever interested in the knives that I use and all the videos, these are Dexter Outdoors knives. They have a massive selection at very affordable prices. Big sponsor of ours. You guys have seen them a lot in 2019 and will continue in 2020. And they give my subscribers a really nice discount of 20% if you guys use the code Landshark at DexterOutdoors.com. Also have them linked below. Now, I'm very interested to see what this gar tastes like, so I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Okay, jumping into it. This is the gar. This is not gar, this is chicken. Since we don't have very much gar and it's kind of a waste to fry that small amount of fish, chicken was on sale at Publix, picked some up. So I have a mixture of 50-50 of cornmeal and all-purpose flour and we're gonna season it up with salt, black pepper, chili powder. Um, this one's either cayenne, oh, I should probably check which one's cayenne and paprika. We wouldn't want to make that mistake. This one's got to be cayenne. I'm going to do a taste test just to be sure. Otherwise, I'm going to kill Brooke. Brooke does not like a lot of spice. That's cayenne. You immediately know what's cayenne. I put on a tiny dab. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of cayenne. Okay. And then paprika. Celery salt. Garlic powder. Lots of garlic powder and some onion, uh, some onion powder. Not a lot. Onion powder is very strong. Okay. Give it a good mix. I don't want it to just be a plain old fish batter. I want it to be a little Cajun zing in there. I like spicy stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think I have a single friend, fiance or family member who likes spicy stuff, do I? I'm like a lone wolf. Jessica likes spicy stuff. You can invite her over That's sometime. Jessica, you gotta come over more. Well, Brooke's home, of course. <laughs> we wouldn't want any angry fiancés. And Brooke is still sick, so uh, a couple of you guys commented saying, why does she look so sad? She's been sick for like two weeks, poor girl. We have egg. Um, egg, and then I cut up the gar into pieces like this. So in case you guys are wondering at home, what the texture is like, it's, believe it or not, firmer than Yellowtail Snapper, and it does not have a bad smell to it. It had very minimal bloodline. They were not very bloody at all. I did bleed this fish though, which I normally never do, and the nice thing about it was when you got the fillets off, there was no bones to remove. No pin bones, no belly bones, nothing. It's just, you got little nuggets. One reason I wanted to do this fish batter with the cornmeal and flour is normally we always do panko or plain breadcrumbs, but there's literally so many different types of fish batters you can make. And I'm not trying to mask the taste of the gar, if that's what you guys are thinking. It's just we honestly haven't had fried fish in a while, have we? Yeah. You guys don't have to watch me do all of these pieces. Next up, hitting the frying pan. So here is the gar going in. And I'm very happy with the batter, by the way. Me and Brooke already tasted the chicken, and whoo, it's good. Woo, woo, woo. This is a nice, hot piece of chicken with a crunchy layer. Oh yeah, look at that steam coming out. Woo. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about how to take your fried fish to another level? Chili powder. Wow, see? She's got to eat it. Chili powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, paprika, cayenne. But it definitely went more on the cayenne. You can't 
can hardly taste the heat, but full of flavor. Seriously full of flavor. And here is the gar. Only regret I have is I wish we had more. You haven't even tried it. I know it's going to be good. I can tell you right now it's going to be delicious. We just got a really simple meal tonight. Some steamed veggies, our gar, some chicken tenders, which we're bringing where tomorrow? We're going fishing. Offshore? Yes, we are. It's finally going to be calm for the first time in like weeks, it seems like. This time of year, it's pretty much like two weeks on, two days, or two weeks off, two days on. It could blow for 10 days straight and you're not able to go offshore. And then you have a two day window, which tomorrow's gonna be calm, tomorrow's Thursday. And then Friday, once again, blown out, can't go offshore. So you really gotta take those opportunities when you can. Looks white. Have we ever caught a fish and it not be white? <laughs> Isn't it kind of funny? We always come with like, our comparisons for good fish is it's white meat. It's always turns white. Tuna's not white. <laughs> when you cook it, it is. <laughs> it's still that hot? Not fishy whatsoever. The, the seasonings that you did with the cornmeal and flour are really, really good. It reminds me of like a chicken tender batter. Like, like, like you would you get- spicy chicken? Like you would get from a fast food restaurant. It's really, really good. It's pretty firm? Yeah, it's definitely firm. Like, didn't flake at all. <laughs> what about muddy? Mm -mm. No? No. Not at all. Well, thank you for the kind words. Now, just if you look at it, it's like she said, it's uh, the one fish it reminds me of is catfish. Catfish is kind of like this. It's kind of yeah. chewy, firm. Not chewy. It wasn't chewy. It's just like. But not chewy and like, a, like you're eating a tough piece of meat. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's a completely different texture than most fish are used to. I would 100% say if I had to compare it to one fish, it'd be catfish. Undoubtedly, the only thing you could compare it to. It's like no other saltwater fish you've ever eaten. It's not muddy. That's the one thing I always think. I wouldn't go out of my way to catch them, but it was definitely a learning experience. This whole catch and cook thing always leads me to think about how people used to view fish back in the day. We walk into a supermarket and everything's curated and you know everything's safe to eat. Back in the day, people just experimented. Nobody knew gar were poisonous or toxic. They had to find out for themselves. Nobody knew lionfish were toxic. They had to find out, they had to grab one for themselves. And it's crazy to think, I mean, not even, what, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, that knowledge probably wasn't around. Challenge yourself to go out and try different types of fish like this. It will very much surprise you. And this battered recipe, top notch. I am gonna finish up eating before this food gets cold. And I'll see you guys in that next video. Bye, hopefully I feel better.